welcome to yet another session on business statistics last session we spent time on frequency distribution and how to construct frequency distribution at the end i concluded with bell curve is the evolute of frequency distribution this session we will see the area under bell curve and its significance one standard deviation two standard deviation and three standard deviation what it means with respect to the data points let us now go to the powerpoint presentation so in the last session we saw about frequency distribution and frequency polygon frequency polygon is just joining the midpoints of frequency bar diagram you can see this is a bit crude but you know if you have more data points and you if you are able to create more class intervals the frequency polygon also becomes smoother as we see in the second one ultimately if you have more and more data points and you are able to divide more class intervals you will see the frequency polygon itself almost looks like a bell curve so the bell curve as i told you in the last session it is the evolute of frequency distribution that means it's a contour that touches the top points of the frequency bar diagram so that's the bell curve generally any data set with over 30 observations one can draw a reasonably good frequency distribution and hence you will get the bell curve and that too if the data points are unbiased you will get a beautiful frequency distribution and also the bell curve now with one standard deviation the data points that is falling under the bell curve is about 68.27% okay that means all the data points with respective frequency diagram frequency bar diagram it will be in this zone with two sigma limits on either side of the mean you get 95.45% of the data so this area plus this additional area and with three sigma limits you will get almost all the data points falling under the bell curve that is the way you understand the area it's a very important phenomenon because the moment you know we talk about mean and one standard deviation mentally you can make a picture that 70% of the data are in that area suppose you have 100 data points or observation then approximately 68 data points will fall in this zone and 95 points will fall in two sigma zone and almost all the data points fall under three sigma zone so that gives a very good idea about the area under bell curve and with respective standard deviation rather the significance of one two and three standard deviation in a bell curve now let us recall the examples of the sprinter and the cricket team manager which we did in the last session so what it means here is that with one standard deviation out of 10 times seven times the sprinter will clock anywhere between 10.4 seconds to 13.6 seconds with two standard deviation out of 10 times he will clock anywhere between 8.8 seconds to 15.2 seconds in nine times that means nine out of 10 times he is likely to clock between 8.8 seconds to 15.2 seconds now let us take the example of the player a player a was chosen because his score was consistent so out of 10 innings seven innings he is likely to score anywhere between 44 runs to 58 runs and with two standard deviation which means that 9 out of 10 innings he will score between 37 runs to 65 runs that is definitely a very consistent score on the contrary if you take player b with one standard deviation that means out of 
10 times, 7 times he is likely to score anywhere between 20 to 92 runs. And 9 out of 10 times is likely to score anywhere between 0 to 128 runs. Yes, he will score a century or he may score a century. But that doesn't prevent him from scoring a duck too. That is the most important things we have to understand. So obviously player A is much more consistent than player B. Because player B runs the risk of scoring a century. At the same time, he is also likely to score a duck. So that completes the understanding about uh, frequency distribution and more importantly the bell curve that that's a evolute on the frequency distribution. So we have understood about the bell curve and the area under bell curve. To conclude the bell curve with one standard deviation means we are talking about 68 percent of the data points is in the bell curve when we take certain inferences or decision and it improves when we take two standard deviations because about a 95 percent or almost 95 percent of the data points are considered when you are talking about the mean and standard deviation again when we consider three standard deviation on either side we almost considered all the data points of the data set so it could have given by this time a good idea about what we talk with one standard deviation, two standard deviation and three standard deviation, what they mean and what it signifies under the bell curve. And we have seen a couple of examples. I hope you like them. And we will move on further uh, with the uh, frequency distribution. Next session we will talk about cumulative frequency distribution. It's one of the very important topics. See you in the next session. Please do subscribe if you have liked all the sessions so far what I have taught.